In this video, I will be discussing about some practice problems based on graphs data structure. Most of the graph questions fall under one of the algos that we have discussed so far. So here I've picked some graph questions from famous coding websites and I will try to explain how we can solve them. So, so far in my previous videos, we have discussed the following algorithms. So we discussed two traversal techniques, BFS and DFS, then three shortest path algorithms, which were Dijkstra, Bellman-Ford and floyd Warshall, then topological sort, then an algorithm to find the cut vertices or articulation points, then the disjoint set or the union find algorithm. Then we discussed two algorithms for minimum spanning tree, which were Kruskal's and Prim's, then the ford fulkerson algorithm to compute the maximum flow, and the graph coloring algorithm to check if the graph is bipartite, and the Hamiltonian cycle, which visits every vertex once, and the Euler cycle, which visits every edge exactly once. So link of all these videos is available in the description. If you have doubts on any of these algorithms, you can refer to those videos. Now let's proceed with the practice problems. So the first question is related to course schedule. So we are given n courses and some courses have some prerequisites. So if you are given data in the form of a comma b, it means that we should take course b before course a. So we are given a sample input like this and we have to find the ordering of courses so that a person can finish all these courses. So basically in this example, we have four courses 0, 1, 2 and 3. And if we take the first data set, this means the course B should be taken before course A. So if we try to plot this in the graph, it should be that there is a directed edge from the vertex 0 to vertex 1. For 2 comma 0, it is directed edge from the course 0 to course 2. For 3 comma 1, directed edge from 1 to 3. And for 3 to 2, directed edge from 2 to 3. We have four courses 0, 1, 2 and 3. So this is a typical case for topological sort because completion of a course is depending on some other course. So every course has some prerequisite. So in topological sort, we calculate the in degrees for each of the vertices. So in degree for vertex 0 is 0 because there is no incoming edge. In degree for vertex 1 is 1 because there is an edge from 0 to 1. For vertex 3, in degree is 2 and for vertex 2, in degree is 1. So in topological sort, we start the traversal from a vertex which has in degree of 0. So here the vertex which has in degree 0 is the vertex 0. So topological sort will start from vertex 0 and then vertex 2 and 1 both have in degree of 1. So let's say we start with 2, then with vertex 1 and then with vertex 3. So this is the ordering of the courses which can be used by any student to finish all the courses. So once you create the graph, then it is simple application of the topological sort. So topological sort I have already explained in detail. The link of that is available in the description. So now let's have a look at the next practice problem. So the next problem we have is people dislikes. So we are given n people and each person may dislike some other person and both of them should not go in the same group. So if we are given data in the form of a comma b, this means a dislikes b. So we want to split the people into two groups such that the people who dislike each other are not into the same group. Let's try to create a graph with this data. So this means one dislikes two, this means one dislikes three, and this means two dislikes four. So if these persons are the vertices of a graph, there is an edge from one to two, then there is an edge from one to three, and there is an edge from two to four. And the person who dislike each other should not go into the same group. So this problem is a typical problem for the graph coloring case because graph coloring is used when we want to check whether the graph is bipartite or not. So we want to split this into two groups. So if in this graph we assign colors to each of the vertices, let's say to vertex 1 we assign color red, then the adjacent vertices we cannot assign the same color. So let's say to vertex 2 and 3 we assign the color green and then to vertex 4 we have to assign a different color so we assign color red again. So the split of persons can be 1 comma 4 and 2 comma 3. So here we have seen how graph coloring algorithm can be used to split the people into two groups. Implementation of the graph coloring algorithm is available in my GitHub repository. And if you want to understand the algorithm, link of that is available in the description. Now let's have a look at the next practice problem. So this problem is reconstruct itinerary. We are given airline tickets 
of a person who departs from JFK airport. He uses all the tickets only once. If you are given data in the form of A, B, it means A is the departure airport and B is the arrival airport. So we have to construct in which order he will use these tickets. So we draw this in the graph. So these will be the vertices. So he goes from JFK to SFO. Then one edge is from JFK to ATL. Then the other edge is from SFO to ATL. Then ATL to JFK. Then ATL to SFO. So this is our start vertex and we have to visit each of these edges only once. So this is an example for the Euler path. Because in Euler path we visit each of the edge exactly once. So we'll start from JFK and we'll go through all the edges only once. So the route can be from JFK, he goes to ATL, then he comes back to JFK, then he goes to SFO, then he goes to ATL, and then he again goes to SFO. So if you just print the Euler path for this graph, we'll get the itinerary. So the implementation of the Euler path is available in my GitHub repository and the link of the algorithm is available in the description. So now let's have a look at the next practice problem. The next question is smallest number of cities at a distance. So we are given a network of cities which are at a distance which is given in the graph. So the distance between A and B city is 2, distance between B and C is 3. And we have to find the city which has the smallest number of cities that are reachable through some path whose distance is at most distance threshold which is equal to 2. So in short we have to find the distance of each of the cities with the other city and at the end we can find out which city has the least number of cities that are reachable. So in this question we can use the floyd Warshall algorithm because it finds the all pair shortest path. So it will find the shortest path for all of the cities which are there. So from A to B, A to C, A to D and A to E, B to C, B to D and B to E, C to D, C to E, and D to E. So it will find all these combinations and from that we can find out which city has the smallest number of cities. So as you know that output of the floyd Warshall algorithm is a 2D matrix. So this will give us a matrix in this way. So the distance between A and B is 2, distance between B and C is 3, between C and D is 1 and between D and E is also 1. So the distance threshold is 2. So for vertex A only B is at a distance of 2. For vertex B, A and E are a distance of 2. For vertex C, D and E are a distance of 2. For vertex D, C and E are at a distance less than 2. And for E, B, C, D are at a distance of 2. So the city which has the smallest number of cities that are reachable is the vertex A because it has only one city which is at most distance of 2. So in this manner, we can use the floyd Warshall algorithm to solve the shortest path problem. So now let's have a look at the next problem that we have. So this problem is network delay time. So we are given n network nodes and we are given data in the form of times i, which means u is the source node, v is the target node and w is the time taken for the signal to travel from the vertex u to the vertex v. We send the signal from a certain node k we have to find out how long will it take for all the nodes to receive the signal. So if we draw this in the graph, so we have an edge from 2 to 1 with a weight of 1, then 2 to 3 with a weight of 1, then 3 to 4 with a weight of 1. So we have 4 vertices and we are sending the signal from the node k. So k is 2 here, so this is our start node. And we want to compute how long will it take for all the nodes to receive the signal so here we can use two algorithms which are Dijkstra and Bellman Ford because none of the edges are negative. So both of these algorithms can be used to compute the shortest distance. So with the start vertex of 2, if we compute the shortest distance using the Dijkstra or the Bellman Ford, we'll find out how much time will it take for all the nodes to receive this signal. So in this manner, the shortest path algorithms can be used to solve this network delay time problem. Now let's have a look at the next question. So the next question is critical connections in a network. So we have n servers which are forming a network where connections i means there is a connection between the servers a and b. Any server can reach any other server directly or indirectly through the network. A critical connection is a connection that if removed will make some server unable to reach some other server. And we have to find all the critical connections in the network. 
So let's try to draw this in the graph. So we have four vertices here, 0, 1, 2, and 3. There's an edge between 0 and 1. There's an edge between 1 and 2, and 2 and 0, and 1 and 3. So as you know, to find the critical connections, we need to find the articulation points or the cut vertices. So here we can use Tarjan's algorithm or the articulation points. So we have to find those vertices whose removal will make the graph disconnected. So if we remove vertex 1, the graph will be disconnected. And if we remove vertex 3, graph will be disconnected because there is no other way to reach these vertices. So 1 and 3 are the articulation points here, which we can find using Tarjan's algorithm. So to find the critical connections in a network, we can use Tarjan's algorithm. So like all other questions, implementation of this also is available in the description and the GitHub repository. So let's proceed to the next question. Now the next question is connect points. So we are given a 2D plane and we are given points in the form of X and Y coordinates. We have to find the minimum cost such that all the points can be connected and there should be only one simple path between any two points. So these are the points that we are given. So let's try to draw this in the 2D plane. So we have five vertices here and we want to find the minimum cost such that all points can be connected and there is only a simple path between any two points. So basically here we want to find the minimum spanning tree. So here we can make use of Kruskal's or Prince algorithm because both of these find the minimum spanning tree. And for distances between these two vertices, we can use the Euclidean distance. So if the two vertices are x1 and y1 and x2 y2, the distance will be x2 minus x1 square plus y2 minus y1 square and square root of this. So like this, we can calculate the distances for each of the vertices. And then we can find out the MST using the Kruskal's or the Prince algorithm that will give us the minimum cost to make all these points connected. So that is how the problem will be framed in which you can use these two algorithms to find the minimum spanning tree. Now let's have a look at the next question. So this question is number of operations to make the network connected. So we are given n computers and we are given connections, which means that there is a connection from computer A to computer B. So there are certain cables laid down between each of these connections and the whole network is currently disconnected. So we want to find out how we can extract the cables from these connected paths such that we can make the entire graph connected. So here we have six computers and these are the connections between them. Let's try to draw them in the graph. So as you can see here, the graph is disconnected because four and five are not connected with any of the vertices. And we have these two extra cables here, which are redundant because these computers were already connected. So here we have to find out how many cables can we extract from the connected computers to make the entire graph connected. So these all computers belong to one set. And if these already belong to one set, then there is no need of extra cables here. So we can make use of disjoint set or the union find algorithm here. So if we add these vertices into sets, let's say we have these sets S1 and S2. So let's say we put vertex zero in S1. We take this edge first edge, which was zero comma one. So one is reachable through zero. So we'll put vertex one also in the edge S1. Then we have zero comma two. So it means two is reachable through zero and zero is in set S1. So put two also in set S1. Then we have zero comma three. It means three is also reachable through zero. So we'll put three also in the set S1. Now comes one comma two, but both one and two are already in the set S1. So this cable is redundant here. So this is the extra cable because both of these are already in the same set. So there is no need of an cable here. Then comes one comma three. Now one and three are also in the same set. So this cable is also redundant because the computers in the same set are already connected. So we need not need extra cable to make them connected. So we have two extra cables here, one comma two and one comma three. So this one and this one. So we extract two cables and then we can use those two cables in this manner. So now the entire graph is connected. So the minimum number of cables we need to extract are two. So in this way, disjoint set or the union find algorithm can be used here to find the number of operations to make the network connected. Now let's have a look at the next question. So this question is matrix modifications. So we're given a matrix of size n into m consisting of integers 1, 2, 3, and 4. So 1 means we have to move left, 2 means we have to move right, 3 means we have to move up, 4 means we have to move down. 
and we have to find out minimum possible changes which are required in the matrix such that there exists a path from the topmost vertex to the bottommost vertex. So let's try to draw this in the form of a graph. And this is our start vertex and this is our target vertex. So when the vertex has a value of 2, it means we have to move right. So there is an edge from this vertex to the next vertex. So in the second entry it is also 2, so we have to move right. When it is 1, we have to move left. In the next row we have 4, 4 means move down. And we have 2, 2 means move right. And 3 means move up. This 4 means move down, but we cannot move down from here because the matrix size is n into m. So we'll skip this. Then we have 3, 3 means move up. And this 2 means move right. We cannot move right because this is our matrix. So these paths are already given to us and we have to find the modifications that we can do to reach the target. So if we try to map this into one of the shortest path algorithms, what we can do here is the paths which are already given, we can give them a distance of zero. So all these will be a distance of zero. And the paths which are not there, let's give them a distance of one. So now this is the entire graph and we have to find the shortest path from the starting vertex to the target vertex. So now we can make use of any Dijkstra or bell manford algorithm to find the shortest path. So why we have given the distance 1 is if we modify this edge then the cost will be added and we want to find the minimum number of modifications that we can do. And we have given the cost 0 to the already provided vertex because no modification is required on those paths. Now if we find the shortest path in this graph we can see that we can go in this direction. So the cost will be 0 plus 0 plus 1 plus 1 which is 2. So the minimum number of changes that we require is 2 because of this edge and this edge. So you will not be given a straightforward question in an interview or any of your exams but you'll have to do some modifications to fall them under one of these categories because most of the graph problems can be solved by these algorithms. So I found this problem from all these programming websites like Lead Code and Geeks for Geeks. If you want to practice more you can find more such problems there. So this was just to give you an idea how we can map the graph algorithms to the competitive programming questions or the interview questions. I hope you found it useful. If you like my content please give a like, share and subscribe to my channel. It really motivates me to make more such content. And until next time this is Sandeep Thapar signing off.